In today's video, we'll dive into policy-based routing on MyRoutic and break down the key differences between routing rules and MAR routing with Mango. By the end of the video, you'll be clear about which method works best for your setup and also how to avoid common challenges. My name is Wilmer Almazan and this is The Network Trip. Hello and welcome. Let's assume that we have a topology like the one in the diagram. So we can see here that we have a router, we have an ISP, and we have multiple local area networks. So in this case, I have included two local area networks, but here you can have any type of configuration for your internal networks. Maybe multiple switches with multiple routers. At the beginning, most likely, you will have only one internet service provider. But in this case, it's called ISP1. Because everything that is coming from these devices and going to internet is gonna flow out of that direction. Let's say that now we are going to add a second ISP. So we have the ISP number two. And we want to have full control over the flow of the traffic. So basically we are gonna have some traffic leaving out of the ISP one. But we want to explicitly define who is going to be using the ISP2. And at this point is where policy-based routing is going to come to the game. So we are talking about policy-based routing. Basically, we are talking about a mechanism that is going to allow to override the default routing behavior. So there are multiple values that we can use to make that decision. So, for example, the destination IP. So we can say, for example, all the traffic that is going to the Google's IP or that is going to a specific set of public IPs on the internet will be using this specific service provider. But additionally, we can use something like the source IP. So, for example, all the IT network is going to be using the ISP number two, or probably this specific IP from the manager or from the marketing department. Is going to be using a specific exit to internet. Also, we can use the protocol or even the port number. So probably you will have a connection that is going to be used for voice over IP traffic. You'll be sending the traffic out of that specific internet connection. There are basically two methods that we can use on MyRotic. Additionally, to the dynamic load balances that we'll cover in another video in the channel. So one of those is routing rules, and the second one is my routing using the Mango. So there is a common element that is going to be present in any of those two methods, and it's a routing table. By default, router OS is going to have one routing table that is called the main routing table. So just by having a router with an IP address on any of the interfaces, that is going to create a connected route that is going to belong to the main routing table. If we go to the current setup in my lab environment, uh, so we can see here that if I go to IP addresses, so I have all the IPs. So I have the connection to the ISP1, I have the connection to the ISP2, I have the LAN1, and I have the LAN2. So currently, my lab environment is only using the ISP number one. If I go to IP routes, so you can see here all the entries in the routing table, and there is a column here that we can show. If I right click on this and click on show columns, I can enable routing table. And if I go to the right, so you can see here this routing table, and we can see that all those entries belong to the main routing table. Any packet coming from those devices and going to any IP destination will be checked against this routing table, and the router is going to find a gateway where those packets will be sent. Anything going to internet currently is going to use the gateway 40.0.0.1. That is basically the ISP1. If we are going to be using whether routing rules or my routing with Mangle, we are going to need a new routing table. And now we're going to create a routing table that we're going to call ISP2-RT. And to do that, we can simply go to the Winbox and then routing and then 
tables. In the here under table, you can see that by default, there is only one routing table with the name main. We are going to add a second entry and we are going to give it a name. So it's going to be called ISP2-RT. And we are going to enable the forwarding information base. If I don't enable this option, basically the table is going to exist, but the table won't be used to forward traffic. So I want to actually enable it. I have to click on FIV. And now I can click OK. So now the router has two routing tables, but it's still, but there are no routing entries for the new table that we have created. So my next step is going to be to add a default route that in this case is going to belong to the new routing table that we have just created. So here on the right key routes, we are going to add a new entry and we're going to say that the zero network, that means any IP, is going to be using as the gateway, the IP from the ISP2. And in this case, it's 50001. But we have to make another change. And we're going to say that this entry belongs to the ISP2 routing table. And now I can click OK. And now you see that I have two default routes, but one belongs to the main routing table. And the second one belongs to the ISP2 routing table. So how can we, for example, send the traffic from this network, 192.168.2.0.live24, via the ISP2? But it still send the traffic from the LAN number one via the ISP1. We're going to explore the first method that we can use to meet that requirement. That is going to be by using routing rules. So a routing rule is basically a pretty simple, a pretty straightforward mechanism where we can use some basic information in the packet to decide which routing table is going to be used to resolve that traffic. And we can use something like the source address, we can use something like the destination address, or we can use the incoming interface. So based on that criteria, now we can say all the traffic that is meeting these specific requirements is going to be using this specific routing table. To configure this method, we simply need to add some rules on the routing rule. So for example, here, we try to send all the internet traffic from the network 10110 slash 24 through a different one link. So we have to think about the conditions. So the first one is that any traffic that is coming from that IP and going to IPs on internet, this is going to exclude any traffic going to private IPs. That's why here in, on the example, we can see that there are three rules that basically are saying that any traffic that is going to the private IPs will be resolved using the main routing table. But then we are telling any traffic that is coming from the network 10.1.1.0 like 24 is going to be using the new routing table. If we only add this entry, so basically all the traffic from this network will be using the new one link. But that is going to include the public IPs and also is going to include the private IPs. So that means that this network will not be able to talk to other private networks because it's going to be resolved using a different routing table. So our goal is to send this traffic out of the ISP2. So I'm going to add just one entry and then I will exclude the private traffic. But we want to see the behavior if I don't add those rules that are targeting the private traffic. We already have a default route inside the new routing table. So what I need is to go to routing rules. And basically here I need to add an entry. So here you can see that we can use information like the source address or destination address or in incoming interface, and then we have this action. So I'm going to explain each of those actions just in a bit. But now what we are trying to do is to send all the traffic from the network 192.168.20.24. So we can see that this is going to be source address, because when the traffic from this network is coming to the router, this is going to have an IP that belongs to that specific network. And that's why we have to use this as a condition. And then basically we're going to say if we are getting anything from this network, we are going to use the routing table that belongs to the ISP2. 
and I will click OK. Additionally, since this is a new ISP, I will need also a NAT entry here to NAT all the traffic that is leaving out of the router because we have to use the IP that belongs to that specific ISP. So we'll go to IP and then firewall NAT and we can see here that now I have a NAT for the ISP number one due using masquerade. So instead of adding a second rule, I will create an interface list. So here I will go to lists. I'm going to call the list one interfaces. This is basically a container where we are going to add all the interfaces where the ISPs are connected. And now we can go back to interface list and we are going to add the members for that specific list. So one member is iter1 and the second member is iter2. And now this is going to give a more efficient way to create the NAT entry. So I will go back to IP firewall, then NAT. And if I go back to general, instead of using our interface, I'm going to use our interface list. And I will select the new list that I just created. So basically, instead of having two NAT rules, I will only have one. Under action, we are going to keep masquerade. And now, instead of saying that this is the NAT1, we are going to say NAT ISPs. So I will go to the PC2 and I will trace the traffic going to A.8.8. .8. And you can see that effectively this is going out of the ISP2. If I go to PC1 and I trace this again, the PC1 is going out of ISP1. So at this point, we are meeting our goal. So the LAN1 is using the ISP1, the LAN2 is using the ISP2. But what happens if I try to establish communication between PC1 and PC2? So for example, on PC1, if I check the IP, so they have the IP 1.254. So if I come to the PC2 and I try to ping 192.168.1.254, you'll see that this won't get a response. And the problem is that everything that is coming from the PC2 is being resolved using the new routing table. So if I go back to the Winbox and I go to IP routes, you see that here we have this routing table. If I want to filter only that routing table, we see only the entry for this routing table. And basically this is what the router is going to see. So basically that's why PC1 will never respond because actually it's not getting the request from the PC2. And we can see that if I trace this traffic, so you'll see that it's been sent to the ISP2. And basically, the ISP2 has no idea about this internal network that we have. And that's why we have to exclude all the traffic that is coming from the LAN2 but going to private networks. So we can still use the main routing table to resolve that internal traffic. So let's go back to routing and then rules. And on top of this rule, we are going to add new entries. So again, we're going to say that anything that is coming from 192.168.2.0 slash 24. But now we're going to add a new condition. If that is going to all the networks in the RFC 1918, so those are all the private networks, we're going to use the main routing table. So now we'll copy this again. And the second network is 172.16.00.12. And the third is 192.168.00.16. So all of those are the networks that are defined in the RFC 1918. And now those rules will be processed before the rule that is more general. So that means that any traffic going to private IPs will be using the main routing table, but any other traffic from that network will be using the second routing table. And now if I go back to the PC2 and I send a pin to that IP, you see that this is getting a response. But still, if I trace the traffic going to internet, this is using the ISP2. So when exploring the routing rule, we saw that there are different actions that we can perform. So one of those actions is drop. So basically this is to silently drop a packet. So for example, this is 
going to allow to block traffic, for example, from a specific local area network going to a specific destination, you can simply use drop. This is some sort of firewall setting that you can use if you don't want to use filter or you don't want to use ROM. Another action is lookup. So lookup is going to be used if we have an active backup setup, like in my topology. So for example, we have the ISP1, we have the ISP2. I pick in the ISP2 for the LAN2, but what happens if the ISP2 is down? So in that case, if I'm using lookup, the router won't find any matching entry in that ISP table, then it's simply going to use the main routing table. So you have some sort of failover in case the routing table that we have specified is not available. But what happens if we have a local area network that we want to force to use a specific ISP, and if that ISP is down, we don't want to failover over the others. So in that case, we're going to be using lookup only in table. That means that if the routing table that we have specified in the rule is not able to reach that destination, basically the traffic is going to be discarded. And finally, we have unreachable that is going to block the traffic, but it's going to send a response, an ICMP message, basically announcing to the source that this traffic is being discarded in that point. So let's see how these actions work. So I'm going to come here to the PC2, and I will be sending a ping to this IP on internet. So now what I'm going to do is that I will go back to routing rules and I will open this entry. And instead of lookup, I'm going to pick lookup only in table. So let's see how this affects the communication from the local area network too. So I'm going to go here to interfaces and I will disable the connection to the ISP2. So basically, this device won't be resolving using the main routing table. But what happens if I come to routing rules, and then instead of lookup only in table, I select lookup. So now we can see that this is resolving by using the main routing table. So if I trade the traffic, so it's going to be using 4001. And basically, that is because the router is coming to IP routes, it's checking the ISP2 routing table. We don't have any active entries that are contained in the destination because the only one that is here is unreachable. So, a router is going to fail over the main routing table. And then, we're going to use this information. So, if I re enable the ISP2 and I go back to IP routes and then I check the ISP2 routing table, so now this is active. So I mean that this PC is going to be using the ISP2 again. So basically that's the difference between lookup and lookup only in table. This is how routing rules work. It's an efficient method. We're going to be using PBR based on the source and destination IP or the incoming interface. It's going to be using less CPU than Mangle. That's going to be the next method that we're going to explore now. So Mangle is an structure that is under IP firewall where we are able to manipulate the information on the packet. The idea is to add a label into that packet that we are going to call a routing mark that basically is going to be the name of the routing table. And now we have a more complete set of features or parameters that we can use to filter the traffic. So for example, let's assume that I want to send all the HTTP traffic through a different one link. So this is something that I can't accomplish by using routing rules because we don't have the option to add port numbers. So we can see here that we're using the chain pre-routing. We can use conditions such as the protocol, the destination port, and this is going to be the action. Mark routing, and then we're going to set the name of the routing table that we want to use. I'm going to remove all the routing rules that I currently have, and again, I'm going to send all the traffic from the LAN 2 via the ISP2, but now using the mango. So let's see how this is going to work. So I will go here to routing rules and basically I'm going to remove all those entries. So now the only thing that I have is the default entry on the ISP2 routing table. And obviously I have all the remaining entries for the main routing table. So now instead of going to routing rule, we're going to go to IP firewall and then to the mangle section. And then here I'm going to add an entry and we're going to pick this pre-routing chain. And you can see all the fields. Any of those 
fields can be used as a condition to specify the routing table that we want to use. In my case, it's going to be based just on the source address. Any traffic that is coming from the IP 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And then we are going to go here to action. And we are going to use mark routing. And then here under new routing mark, we are going to pick the routing table that we want to use. And also I'm going to uncheck path through. Path through means that this action is going to be applied, but the router will continue checking more rules under this one. So in this case, I don't want to process any other rules, so I will simply uncheck this entry. And then as a comment, I will say PBR ISP2. And now if I go back to, to the PC2 and I trace the traffic to Google, so you see that again is leaving out of the ISP2. But I'm going to have the same problem than before, that uh, all the private traffic is also going to be sent to the ISP2. So to avoid that, what we can do is that we're going to create an address list. And then here under address list, I'm going to create a new entry and I will say RFC 1918 networks and I will add all the private networks. So I have that list that is basically a container with all those networks and now I can go to the mangle rule and then we can add a new condition. So we'll go to general and then here under destination address list we are going to select that list and then we're going to negate that list. So basically any traffic that is coming from this network and is going to an IP different than IPs in those private networks is going to be labeled with the name ISP2-RT. And now I can click OK. And still, if I trace this traffic, this is leaving out of the ISP2, but still I will have IP connectivity between my local area networks. I'm going to keep the ping to Google running and I'm going to disable the ISP2 to see what is going to be the behavior when we are using the Mango. So I'm going to go to ISP2, I will disable that entry. And you can see that this is still going successfully. And we can see that the connectivity continues. And if I trace this traffic, now this is using the ISP1. So basically, when we use routing marks with Mangle, the default action is going to be lookup. An important recommendation is to avoid using the Mangle and routing rules at the same time if that is not necessary. But if uh, you require to have those two working at the same time, remember Mangle is going to have a higher priority. That means that you are adding marks to the traffic in the Mangle section and those marks have been resolved in the routing table, those packets will never see the routing rules. We went through two different methods, routing rules, routing marks with Mangle. When you are creating entries in the routing table, you are allowed to use recursive routing. Recursive routing will allow to monitor IPs that are beyond the ISP's gateway. So in case the ISP's gateway is still up, but the internet connection is down, recursive routing will be able to know that. And then it's going to disable that entry and you will be able to fail lower on the main routing table. I hope that this video has been informative for you and I see you on the next one.